This lab, the use of volumetric glassware, will help to refresh you on the use of equipment that we will use the entire year and also really teach us again the requirements of significant figures. You'll be challenged to read to the right degree of precision with your measuring tool, ultimately calculating the percent difference between different 25 milliliter measurements using a beaker versus a graduated cylinder versus a pipette versus a burette. Oftentimes, we need the level of precision that a burette pipette delivers. Sometimes a grad cylinder is enough, sometimes even a beaker is enough. But a reminder, in AP chemistry, we never measure the volume of um, a liquid using a beaker. Oh, these are only for approximations. Most times, a graduated cylinder is good enough. However, we will work a lot with pipettes and burettes this year. So just a bit on the theory. This entire year, of course, we will be incorporating significant figures. And significant figures are rooted in the precision of the measuring tool. Every measurement is allowed one position of uncertainty, one position of guess. And that position of guess depends on exactly the graduations or the jumps between actual markings on your measuring device. You are allowed, in general, one guessed position beyond what the graduation for sure confirms for you. That is allowed if the graduations jump in ones. So if they jump from one to two to three milliliters, those are increments of one milliliter increases, well then you're allowed to guess to the 10th place. If the graduations are by tenths. So it's 1, 1 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3, then you're allowed to guess to the hundredth. However, if the markings jump in allotments that are greater than one, so maybe they jump in fives or in two tenths, well then you are bound to that position. So the first thing that we're doing is measuring the volume of samples of solution in different graduated cylinders. And this will really challenge you to, to really learn the skill that I just talked about. So that's the first thing that we're doing. Then it doesn't matter the order in which you go, but you are to um, utilize a 50 milliliter beaker to measure a 25 milliliter sample of pure water, do the same with a 25 milliliter grad cylinder, do the same with a 25 milliliter graduated pipette, and then we always utilize 50 milliliter burettes. So I wanna go through just a little bit of tips. Now, you need, ladies and gentlemen, to measure the temperature of the water that you're using on that day in lab. So we don't just want to make the assumption that we're at room temperature if we have the opportunity to measure. And today it's fine just to use our thermometers. Often in AP chemistry, we utilize our temperature probes, but we're good here. So you'll measure the temperature. And then there's an appendix in your lab manual that lists known densities of water at those temperatures. So this can be found in, in that appendix. We are going to measure the mass of your different measured samples of water. And the way that we will mass is by um, difference. So the lab instructs you to have a beaker, you can use any size. You wanna measure the mass of an empty, dry, clean beaker. Then add your measured sample, be it from the pipette, the burette, the grad cylinder, the beaker, to then measure the mass of the beaker and the water. You're of course going to subtract away the mass of the empty beaker to get the mass of the water. 
if there are any calibration errors or um, you know any kind of things that are off with your balance, well, that will come through in the measurement of the empty beaker and that's not what we're after. So this year we will always measure um, mass by um, difference. You're not gonna put the beaker on and tear that. Now you'll tear or zero your balance before you put the beaker on. All right, next. Um, whenever we are measuring, we're trying to get as close as your eye believes is 25 milliliters. So of course you'll get down on eye level. You don't pick up the beaker or pick up the grad cylinder. We know that we need it on the, the level um, surface. Um, and often when you're trying to get a perfect volume, we go over or go under, please always help yourself to the disposable pipettes that we have in a box somewhere within the classroom. If you ever forget, just ask, of course. And then um, I would always have just a, a additional beaker. Now, you guys know that you can always mark on the non-marked area of our glassware. And so this is just gonna be my, you know, uh, water sample. And so if we write with Sharpie, not on the actual, you know, markings from the manufacturer, then just with a little bit of acetone, which I always have in the fume hood, on um, a, a paper towel, you can always just remove that. We know that. So if you need to mark anything, because we often have multiple beakers with different solutions, but they often are colorless and clear and they all look like water. So um, when you're pouring in, then to get it exactly where your eye believes is at 25, well, feel free to go ahead and add drops or take away drops so that you just deliver the best measurements that you can. All right, the pipette. Now, we are very fortunate to have um, a variety of different pipettes. Most of the time, you are uh, relying on a pipette to deliver a set volume of liquid. Now, these have one graduation. Our 25 milliliter pipettes have been manufactured that when this is filled and the meniscus of your solution or liquid is exactly on the mark. Now, depending on the pipette you use, that volume, total volume of 25, could be a little closer to the bulb or a little higher. So just, you know, make sure you're aware of that. Um, then when the liquid is drained from this, it will deliver exactly 25.00 milliliters. So it is trusted to the hundredth of a milliliter. Often we do have pipettes that have graduations and can be used for specific measurements, but for this lab, um, we will utilize um, just the one measured pipette. Now, we use aspirator bulbs and um, always ask for assistance if you forget, but there are letterings on the different parts of these and it is explained in your lab manual. So at the top, there's an A and that's for aspirate. So we always want to start by evacuating the air from the bulb. So you could think of A as air as well, but all right. Then to most safely add these to the pipette, you kind of do it at an angle. Just always let me know. So we don't have to twist it on. We don't push it on, just add it. And as long as it is pretty kind of um, secure on there, you're good. So you don't have to lower it a certain distance or anything like that. So we've aspirated this. All right, then we're ready to have the liquid fill. And for that, can you even believe it? They use an S for suck, which we know does not exist, but will be forgiving. So whenever you place this into your liquid, this through uh, a pressure difference allows for the atmosphere to push the liquid up. Now it will go quickly up through the narrower part of the pipette and then slower through the bulb. So just be careful how much you are pushing this. And usually I do allow the liquid to fill beyond my graduation mark. Then still above the liquid that I um, you know, pulled from, you then press E, which is empty or evacuate. 
And then you can get this to be exactly on the 25 mark. Then you have your empty beaker, you've masked it. Now do not worry, this has been tested over and over. So whenever you cannot see any air bubbles and the meniscus is right on that marking and the, um, it's a consistent liquid, don't worry if there's drops here or like um, air bubbles at the very end. It's been tested so that when you press the E, exactly that 25.00 milliliters um, will be dispensed. Also do not worry if this liquid drains water in this case, and there's still a little bit remaining in the tip. You don't have to shake it in or blow in the pipette to push it in. Um, it's been gradual, it's been tested over and over and over so that when you utilize it following the proper directions, it has delivered exactly 25.00 milliliters. So like one dropped up, but there's still a little bit of liquid there. Don't worry about that. All right, now on to the burette. I'm short, no uh, mystery about that. And I never fill my burettes all the way to the top because I know that to properly use them, I need to be at eye level. Now, first thing that we always do when we're using a burette is wash it. And remember in chemistry, washing doesn't necessarily mean, hardly ever means soap and water. We need to evacuate the water that's in there, this is pure water, that's what we always keep, but it's been waiting in the lab for you. So probably some dust has gotten in there. So we need to evacuate that. We need to rinse then it, expose the inner with multiple um, exposures to the actual liquid we're filling it with so that there's no dilution. You also need to make sure that before you make your first measurement, you pour or you allow the liquid to pass through um, the actual stem of your burette so that that is an accurate volume that then when you measure a new volume, that is exactly the liquid that has been um, distributed out of your, your burette. All right, whenever you remove a burette from the stand, you absolutely need a firm grasp of it. Now these burette holders, can um, be released by just squeezing here. Now we have other burette holders and the most common other one that we have in our classroom is, is this where we have this kind of middle portion. Again, a firm hand on this. So if you push forward, it releases the hold of the burette. Now we should never just grab the burette and pull it or push it. We should always loosen the, um, the holder so that um, we don't damage the burette in any way. Now remember, when the valve of the burette is perpendicular with the burette, then the valve or the um, liquid doesn't pass through the um, spout. But of course we know that if we just begin to start to open it, we can get a little bit of volume aliquots, drops, and then when it, it is parallel, we get a full stream. All right, first thing is to clean this. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and, and dump out the liquid. This, of course, is the sink. All right, and then I need to do several rinsings. If we're rinsing with water, we can just use our squirt bottles, or you could go ahead and pour from um, your just water um, resource beaker. Now, whenever we're doing the washing, we wanna make sure it pours through the spout, and then, you introduce the liquid to all the inner surfaces. So it takes about five or so milliliters to do this. Now, remember water um, has a lot of good particle attraction of hydrogen bonding. And so sometimes if you just pour about a mil or two, it could be the particle attraction is great enough that it overcomes the pull of gravity. And so a lot of students think that their burette is clogged, but no, you just need to add more water to increase the weight so gravity can pull it through. Um, and so I'm gonna go ahead and let it drain again, and then I'll pour this out. And we should wash three times, and then go ahead and fill however much you're comfortable with it being at eye level. But no matter what, you can always make an adjustment 
when you're making your, your actual measurement. So I, of course, I'm short. So I'm gonna have a just kind of catch beaker. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put a C on this. This is gonna be my catch beaker. And I am going to keep my eye here until it gets to eye level. There we go. All right. And it doesn't matter. You don't have to start exactly on a whole volume measurement. And as long as you're consistent, you can measure the volume from top down or from bottom up. And lean on your lab partner for a question on that, or you can of course ask me. So you need to make sure before you make the first measurement that liquid is passed through the, the, um, the valve completely in the stem. Then you'll put your empty, dry, clean beaker that you've already masked underneath. Go ahead and pass out what you believe will be 25 milliliters. And it doesn't have to be spot on whatever you measure it to be. So you can be a little bit under or a little bit over, more than fine, more than fine. So you'll go ahead and pass that. Now, of course, you wanna make sure you never pass the last graduation because there's always um, just some um, extra room after, in our case, 50. Well, if you're past that, you can't make a measurement. Now, if at any time you need to refill a burette, it's absolutely up to you. Some students feel comfortable just pouring right from a beaker. Of course, taking care that you don't overrun the outside. Other students feel better if they put a funnel in the top. That is absolutely fine, absolutely fine. You can also always fill by taking it out of the holder. That is fine as well. Okay, so um, the goal of our lab is you, by using the density per the temperature of your water, will be measuring masses, you calculate volume. You can call that experimental value one or experimental value two. Just be consistent. Now, there's a different degree of precision per the burette, possibly the pipette, the um, beaker, and the grad cylinder. Now, what you measure, if you wanna consistently call that E1, what you're measuring it to be. So as long as you, for example, with the pipette, added, um, got the water to be exactly with your meniscus on the 25.00 milliliter mark and fully let it drain, then your E1 is 25.00 milliliters. That's your measured. Well then your E2 will be the volume that the density and mass reveal it to be. Now, we want those to be the same. We want our percent difference to be zero. We'll see per your measurements how good we are, how close we are to zero. But that also reveals um, the reliance of that piece of equipment or possibly your use of that piece of equipment. Now, percent difference is different from percent error where we are comparing theoretical and experimental. We know that. All right, so that gives you some guidance. Make sure you're remembering to take temperature. Make sure um, that you're remembering to get at eye level. Make sure you're washing your burette and handling everything with care.